Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Kristen. And I'd like to welcome you to another program, another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, in this conversation, I would like to talk with you about Kundalini and judgment. But before we get into the conversation, I would like to thank everybody who showed up at the New York seminar and the Ireland seminar that took place at Newgrange. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, wonderful people. I'd like to thank Amelia Santara for organizing it and orchestrating it and allowing it all to come together. Amelia, you've done a wonderful job. And I want to I want to validate all of your efforts uh, towards these these uh, issues. So, so thank you very much, Amelia. And just to let everybody know that Amelia and I are in the same room, so we're going to get a real definite echo because uh, our laptops are so close to each other. Right now, she's uh, she's on in the hold mode, but I'm looking right at her gorgeous face right now. And so with that in mind, I'd like to say hello to John O'Connor, who may be listening on his computer in between hands of poker. So, <laughs> we're over here at, uh, at your daughter's house, Yvonne, and, and we're broadcasting today, everyone. We're broadcasting from the city of Cork in the county of Cork in the country of Ireland. And it is an honor to be broadcasting uh, from this location. Right now, the uh, the local time is just a little bit after 11 o'clock, and, uh, and uh, it's a beautiful evening here in Ireland, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you who are new to this program, I'd like to direct you to kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com, and that's the numeral one, dot com, uh, for more information about the Kundalini as it comes through uh, through Chrism. Also, I'd like to uh, to direct you to uh, Kundalini, the number zero, and, and, and I'm sorry, Chrism, the number zero, Kundalini at YouTube on the YouTube networks. There's about 290 uh, YouTube videos all about the Kundalini there, and you can come to uh, on the Yahoo network. You can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One at yahoogroups.com and Kundalini. Healing, Kundalini Healing at Yahoo Groups dot com, as well as Facebook groups called Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point, Kundalini Awakening Systems Two, and Kundalini Healing on the Facebook network. So there's some uh, there's some some points of availability for this information to be given to you uh, free of charge, and uh, it is it is that way because the Kundalini comes to us without monetary valuation. It is within us all, and it, it can be appreciate, appreciated by all of us uh, without having to to, um, to to pay through the nose, as some folks have to do. You know, I, you know, they get a teacher, and the teacher says, "Oh, it's five thousand dollars a ticket." Well, not not here, not here. This is affordable. This is free. This is a service. This is a selfless service given by John and Amelia O'Connor uh, in the Kingdom of Kerry uh, in Ireland. And I would like to to thank both of them for that great gift that they give uh, the world, literally the world, as as Amelia posted today on Facebook. This is broadcasting all over the world, and I want to welcome you, the world, to this conversation. And right now, I'm going to put myself on hold, and I'm going to uh, give the wheel over here to Amelia. Hello, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. One second. Hello, everybody. I'm delighted to be here, and um, I'd like to welcome you all to... Um, okay, I think we're having a small technical difficulty. Chrism, if you could just hand me your thing and leave it. It is not on this to me. Okay. You go red and make me green. You go red and make me green. Yeah. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. 
Well, well, evidently it's not going to work with two iPads in the same room. Um, so uh, I'm going to hand this iPad over to her, and hopefully this will work. Here, here comes Amelia. <laughs> okay, hello everybody. That's great. Thank you, Chris, and it's working well now. I'm delighted to be here in my home city of Cork and to be welcoming CRISM to Ireland um, with a great pleasure for me and meeting everybody in New York last week um, was a wonderful experience. So hello to everybody. I know some of you are going to be listening and um, it was a great privilege and we had great fun at the seminar there in New York last week. Hello to everybody that attended the seminar in Newgrange. Um, I know some of you are also listening here tonight. Um, as Chris said, we're in Cork, and um, this is my hometown, and we're in my daughter's house tonight because she has internet. So thank you, Yvonne. Very much appreciated. Usually at this stage, I give um, the information about the seminars, and of course that's over now, and I won't be doing that. But just to let you know, um, Rosemary will be giving you information about the seminars that are happening in Minnesota, and these are happening in September this weekend. So I'm very excited and delighted that there's another, another opportunity for people to attend a seminar, to meet with CRISM, to meet with other Kundalini people in a beautiful city that's really well positioned for um, access from many places in the USA. And I think it's a great as well if you're coming from Canada to attend the seminar. So if you're in that area of the world, please consider it. Um, that will be the final opportunity to meet with CRISM and other Kundalini people at a very special gathering in 2014. Um, we don't know when there'll be another seminar after that. So please do contact Rosemary um, if you have an interest in this. I will just give you the dates and Rosemary will fill you in again herself later if she phones in. It is September the 27th and September the 28th. Um, and Rosemary will be giving this information out on Kundalini Awakening System, you know, on the Facebook groups. So you can check it out there and she will also be giving an email. I would like, like to, at this stage, also give you the opportunity to make a donation if you should so wish to do so. And um, there is no charge for anything that PRISM does. But yet we live in this real world. There are bills to pay. There are internet, you know, internet must be kept up and telephone bills. There's, there's just bills to pay. This is the world we live in. And so therefore, the only means of finance that Chrism has is through the donations that he receives from people who make the choice to contribute to him. There is never any, you know, expectation or pressure to do so. But all donations are very gratefully received with love and much appreciation. So I'm going to give you the website for that. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the top right-hand corner is the donate button. Um, thank you very much. All right. All right. So uh, this is Kristen. I'm back. And uh, I just want to... to echo a lot of what Amelia just said, but I, but the Facebook group is Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. That's where Rosemary will be uh, posting her information and I believe Rosemary is on right now, so I'm going to go ahead and put her on. Hello, Rosemary. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Hi. Can you give us the information about your seminar? Yes, it will be, as you've heard, September 27th and 28th, or always a Saturday and Sunday. And it will be here in the Twin Cities. It is actually the St. Paul side of the river, 10 minutes from the airport. We have the seminar in a, a hotel, and we have rooms that will be blocked for us there. Uh, uh, Eileen Loro is working with me, too, so that we can get this word out to as many places as possible here in the Twin Cities, and if any of you have friends here that you'd like for them to be introduced to Kundalini, this would be the perfect opportunity, and I love what Amelia said. I didn't think about Canada. My goodness, yes, we're very close. 
So we'll, as soon as we work out the details, uh, we'll have other information for you. And I'm counting on having a turn in every blog talk to say whatever else we know or to remind everyone. So thank you, Chrisom. Okay. All right, Rosemary. Well, thank you for for that information, and and uh, thank you, Eileen. Eileen, I see that you're on too, and I want to thank you. Looks like you might have a question. I'm going to put you on hold, Rosemary, and bring Eileen on. Yes. Come on, here we go. Stand by, Rosemary. Hello, Eileen. Hi, Chris. Um, I don't have a question. I'm just I just called in to listen. <laughs> so I'm glad the seminars I am really happy the seminars went well um, They're always unique And very um, Worthwhile And so I'm glad everyone Enjoyed themselves Well I want to I want to thank you I, I want to thank you uh, for, for teaming up with Rosemary And I look forward to seeing you there At that seminar We'll go ahead and work out those details uh, Um uh, you know, when we're when we're off air, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put you on hold and and begin this conversation. Okay, everyone, this this is a conversation about Kundalini and judgment, and I and I would like to say that uh, judgment in many cases is is an action of the ego. Uh, we judge others uh, by our own cultural values without regard to to uh, really uh, looking at at uh, the the effect of the ego uh, as we make these judgments. I would I would also like to say hello to Lorne White and uh, Julie and the guests, the four guests that are in the chat room right now. The chat room is up if you'd like to uh, partake in there. Also uh, to to everybody who's listening in the archives, I want to say hello to you and 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 with much appreciation that you have taken the time to listen to this information. With judgment, we have to be very, very careful with how we uh, insert it into our expression with other people. It's incredibly important with with the kundalini because of the amplification the kundalini gives a person. If you go into judgment over a, or over a, a a person or a situation that involves people or just you know, as a descriptive function of our life in society, say, you know, there's a homeless man. Well, there's there's all kinds of judgments around what it is to be homeless. Or or you see a wealthy person. Well, there's all kinds of judgments about what it is to be wealthy. And we need to really begin to back away. Back away from the ego's insistence on committing judgmental uh, um orchestrations upon other people in life and society this is one of this is a very important quality because not only does it program our 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 ego consciousness into a, a an endless spiral of judgmentalism but it also can sometimes inflict hurt upon the people who are being judged in one way or another and i would like to invite you to consider the idea that when we are with the kundalini, when, when the divine is upon us and within us and expressing through us in many ways, we are beyond judgment. Divinity uh, will look at you and your application of judgment uh, upon other people, upon other situations that include people with an eye towards your ego. Is this person letting their ego get out of out? Get out of control, or, or is this person allowing their ego to really begin to dominate their kundalini expression? And so karma can be made in these ways. And the karma that a kundalini awakening or activated person makes is often dealt with in this life, in this life. So, you know, that, that, that uh, saying from the Bible, uh, you know, actually is quite appropriate at this time. Judge not lest ye be judged. And, 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 you know, that's kind of a fear-mongering way to say don't judge people, you know, because, oh, there's the punishment of being judged. But there is that, uh, that, that def- definite uh, possibility 
Of course, you know, the Bible doesn't take into account your karma and uh, what may be causing you to go into judgment. That might be beyond of an ego level, but that's okay. As a generalized um, understanding, it is it is best within the kundalini awakening equation to not fall into the trap of judgment over other people. And Amelia, I, I see you would like to say something about this. <laughs> Okay, Chris, and thank you very much. Um, judgment, one of the things um, about judgment, there are so many different ways we probably, you know, are judgmental without even realizing it. I remember, for me, one of the things that I came to learn was in how I gave to people. You know, I would um, have wanted to show love. I would have wanted to be of service. I would have wanted to give to somebody And for a while, I was doing that without realizing that as I was giving, we'll say, let's just take money as an example, although there are different ways, but let's take that as an example. I would be going to give somebody some money, but I wasn't aware that the way I gave the money could be quite judgmental. I wouldn't give it to somebody if I felt maybe they were going to use it for drugs or drink or that sort of thing. I was I was making a judgment and I was being conditional and I was withholding. And so that was something that I learned, you know, um, to be non-judgmental about, that if I'm going to give, if I'm going to show love, that I do it without judgment and I give it unconditionally. Excellent example, I have to say. Excellent example. This this happens all the time. Um, You know, is that person deserving of our donation? Is that person, you know, did they do their their job well enough? Did that waitress refill our water glass to the point where we like it to be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And it just kind of goes on and on and on. And you can see the ramification of judgment upon others in in our real life. Now, this isn't saying that... uh, you you throw away all discernment with regards to uh, having judgment within your environment of, of living life. You you know if you see a, a you know a, a rabid dog walking your way, well you're going to need to make a judgment uh, so that that rabid dog doesn't come to you or or to a loved one of yours, and you'll make a judgment maybe to to sequester that dog and and maybe have the uh, the animal control unit come out and pick it up and test it for rabies, things of that nature. This type of judgment is good, and these types of judgments are survival-based. You know, rabies is not a happy thing to get. And so you make the appropriate judgment when you follow, you know, some of the uh, formulas that I just described. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm really talking about judging a race or judging a an individual based upon your own cultural values that may conflict and typically will conflict with either the activities or the expressions that uh, that a certain ethnic group uh, would have. You know, whether it's it's uh, 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 having covering your head all the time or or covering your face all the time. In France, you know, they they, they won't let. Uh, there's a law, actually, a law against uh, uh, the veil. So, so anybody of, of the Islamic faith, you know, who is a female, won't be allowed to wear that veil because it disturbs other people somehow. You know, this is this is an erroneous judgment, in my opinion. And yet, there, here I go making a judgment on the French go- government. You can see how easy, you know, a person can slip into this. And so. Take a moment and just reflect on how you use judgment in your everyday life. And while you're taking that moment, I want to give you the the guest call-in number, which is 347-934-0026. Go ahead. Feel free to call in or call in just to listen on the phone. I see that uh, the chat room has has a few few more people in it at this point. Kundalini can, in the early stages, during the ego detoxification stages, can become very, very pronounced to the point of of, uh, of being a, a an, an insisted uh, program that that you put out onto other people. A uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking for the word at the moment. 
but it can it can become a a almost like a fist as as we use our judgment and our feelings in in in, in addition to the detoxifications that we're having and this can be this can this can be quite damaging uh for for the people who are receiving the end because you got to remember that kundalini puts out a lot of power in a person puts out a lot of force a, a lot of uh, a lot of emotion and a lot of energy behind that emotion so it's very important to begin to retrain the way you think and the thoughts that come to you with regards to to people whom you know you may not be comfortable with or people who are different from you um the homeless person is a good example. When I was homeless, you know, you get judged a lot when you're homeless. Uh, you, you know, you, you're you're classified as a failure, you're classified as a drug addict, or you're classified as an addict of some sort, or you're classified as just someone who does not fit into society. And it's these classifications within the Kundalini Awakening context that I want you to be aware of. It isn't appropriate. For we as Kundalini awakened people, people who are coming into the divine flesh and, and people who are having the divine energy come in to make our flesh divine, to go into judgment uh, uh, of another culture or another person within a, within a certain expression of life at that time in their life, it is not appropriate for us to do this. And I want you to really uh, consider bringing your ego and the thoughts that the ego comes with under control with regards to this. You, you know, you see somebody walking a certain way. I'm going to give you an example. Um, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, <laughs> when, when, when Amelia and I drive around uh, strange cities in Ireland, which she hasn't been to very much and I haven't been to at all, you know, we're instead of using the GPS, we seem to do a, a Kundalini style of GPS, which basically means we just roam the streets all over the place, making U turns and turning this way and turning that way and going, Was it this way? I don't know. I don't what do you think? Was it that no, I don't know. So so it kind of gives you an idea <laughs> that it is by God's grace that we get anywhere here in Ireland. We made a U turn in a town of Drogheda which is in uh, uh, central to northern Ireland in the county of Meath. Uh, actually, quite a beautiful, beautiful city. One of the, uh, one of the cities that, uh, that Cromwell came in and, and destroyed. Uh, very beautiful place. Lots of beautiful cathedrals and uh, et cetera and so forth. And so we were making a U-turn there, trying to find our way to... Uh, to avoid the downtown traffic, and and as we made the U-turn, this 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 large man, in, in, all dressed in black with black hair and and uh, black eyes, you know, and he comes walking in a very unbalanced way towards us, not in a drunken way, but sort of that way, but not completely that way, and I immediately noticed him, and I and I felt a surge. A surge of compassion for this man. But at first, there was that flash of, oh my gosh, this is a drunken individual. We don't want to hit him with the car. Because we didn't know which way he was going to lean, whether it was going to be in front of the car, on the side of the car, where it was going to go. And as soon as I, as I, as I made that consideration, oh my gosh, the, the Kundalini kicked in with huge levels of compassion. And when you have the Kundalini in this way, you can go into that person's scenario. And this person has been living his whole life with a with a, a movement disability. I gotta be careful because I'll be going into bliss very soon here, and and I just can't do it. I'll be handing it over to Amelia as I go through the bliss. Uh, I saw in his eyes. I saw in the creases of his eyes. You know, the crow's feet of his eyes. I saw the the pain and the misery and the difficulty that he'd had throughout his life. And, and I saw the judgment that, that people there in his own hometown were making about him. And I saw him really, really trying hard. And he even looked at me and, and he, he, you know, he had, a, he had a face that was very kind of twisted into a permanent grimace, you know, through the activities. Hang on here. Hang on. 
do the activities that that he had to go through in order to just survive in this town of Drogheda in Ireland, and Ireland. And he tried to smile. And I smiled back and uh, immediately reached out with a healing for him. Just not a healing that was going to cure all his ills, but a healing that was just going to give him joy in that moment. And I would encourage you, too, those of you who have the Kundalini, and many of you do, I know you do, I would encourage you to also go beyond, go beyond the the, the surface, uh, ego-based judgment about how a person looks or how a person stands or how they move around and look look a little bit closer into the people that you may be concerned about in a judgmental fashion. And realize it's a very easy thing to slip into. Certainly within the Western society, as, as it, our society you know, can also be seen as a level of judgments that are used as building blocks that help us organize our society in certain uh, caste-like systems. Uh, and so I want you to be aware of that. This man is a beautiful soul, struggling in a very, very difficult environment, socially, emotionally, and physically. And yet, even, even as our eyes locked for just a brief second, he, he was reaching for that smile. And I got to hand it over to, to Amelia. Yes, indeed, he was. And, and I had that time with Prism because Prism told me about this as it was occurring and it was very special and it was a, a really great teaching and a lesson for me because I had also seen the gentleman and I had begun to also make some judgments of him until being with Chrism, you know, in that moment. It is such a brief moment when people pass pass in front of us and beside us. We make such instantaneous judgments and dismiss people and it's an opportunity to actually give and to allow our kundalini to, you know, the more we do that, the more we can give love and, and give in the way that Chrism speaks, speaks, spoke about. Um, I'm passing it back again. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. lately I have to say with these seminars and, and, and with the experiencing I'm having here in Ireland and in New York, <coughs> the bliss is coming really, really fast and furious and, and, um, Thank God for Amelia being here. Otherwise, you just get this, you know, this sobbing man, you know, on the radio. <laughs> I just want to say as well, I've, I've asked Chrism to pass this back to me. I've been with Chrism, you know, as have the people at the seminar while he has been experiencing bliss. And when we were in New York, um, um, we used to hold hands um, together in a circle while Chrism left the bliss flow um and he you know it was it's something that as i'm sitting here and he's it's very very um beautiful to watch and to feel to feel and uh, you know it really really is and while <laughs> while Chrism says the bliss is coming i have to say it's a privilege um to observe to feel and to be in the presence while this is happening because the kundalini is in it and is very very present with me Okay, uh, Lauren. Lauren, I just looked at your uh, your post. It's a bit difficult. It's different than our usual program because we have these two laptops in the room. And Amelia, I'm going to ask you to hold very, very still because even though your sound is off, your mic is still on. Should I turn it off? Do we need it at all? No, go ahead. Turn it off. That's a great idea. And, and Lauren. Uh, and, and, and Julie and everybody, I apologize for that. Love, you know the rustling noises that are taking place. Uh, I, I know how sensitive these iPads can be. They have very, very sensitive microphones. And and uh, Amelia has just turned hers off. And if, if Lauren, if you could write back again whether that has cleared up at all. Uh, oh, there. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you very much. Yeah, I. With these iPads, you have to hold them so still in your hand because even the covers will make noise. I mean, the the, the iPad cover that I have on it. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, so as we continue, I I want you to kind of 
reflect in your life how how you make judgments about other people and 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 uh, and and Julie thank you thank you uh, you you're you're following through it and it's better now and I apologize we typically I'm in California and Amelia is in Ireland and <laughs> You know that's how we set this thing up, and and we're not very used to having the two iPads plus a a laptop computer in the same room. So thank you, thank you for following through. Uh, make a make a, a a note to yourself about how important it is to begin to look at people through the eyes of the Kundalini. Me. When you look at people through the eyes of the Kundalini, the Kundalini does not see that that person struggling with a with a mobility issue as anything but a beautiful a beautiful soul on a very very fast and difficult almost vertical level of evolution and karmic uh balancing that they're going through it the levels of love are are indescribable uh, as the kundalini looks at all of us as we struggle through our lives. Yes, yes, it does make determinations and it does come to conclusions about what we may need to do in order to to accomplish the divine flesh in a in a in a better way, a, a safer way, a, a happier way, uh not only for us but for those around us. And I'm going to I'm going to take this iPad out of this cover so forgive me. future I will be doing there we go okay that should be very very different for people uh, through the eyes of the kundalini we are all beautiful 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 children uh, not saying that in a demeaning way at all uh, but we are people who are engaged in a in a very difficult aspect of spiritual evolution, which is the Kundalini awakening. And all all people will eventually have this type of awakening, whether it's in this body or if it's in a, another body somewhere else. Uh, people will come to this point, and I want to encourage you to begin to see others that way. See others in a very compassionate uh, light, a very compassionate understanding. Do your best to to fall away from uh, from uh, judgments that are, in some ways, uh, you know, uh, watermarks of our society. Um, you know, as, as I'm here in Ireland, and and uh, a lot of drinking here goes on, and so there's a lot of jokes about pub crawls and and uh, the effects of alcohol on people, and you know, there's there's a lot of uh, you know uh, mutual uh, amusement that goes on here with regards to the effects of alcohol on people, and you know I'm not so concerned about that uh, so much. I except for those people who are alcoholics. That's a different story because alcoholism is an extremely difficult uh, condition to have. Uh, some people call it a disease. I'll call it a condition at this point. Uh, it's an extremely difficult uh, condition to overcome and to come through in a safe and sane way. And not everybody makes it uh, like Kundalini. Not everybody makes it through the Kundalini. Sometimes people just commit suicide. And I want you to begin to soften, soften your your opinions and your judgments about people who who engage in in in, in uh, alcohol related activities uh, as a matter of addiction now you know as a matter of you know a group of guys or a group of girls going out and just having a good time well i'd say laugh your laugh your head off have a good time you know poke fun at each other and you know do <laughs> you know just have a have a real good time as 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 a as much as you can. This is not the type of thing that I'm talking about. But when you see that person who may be crawling on the floor or literally, you know, having a very difficult time 
That's a different that's a different scenario. And I'd ask you to shift your awareness. Uh shift your awareness away from from judgment or away from uh seeing people through the eyes of your ego. More and more and more, more and more, I'm going to encourage you to look through the eyes of your Kundalini. One moment. Got something in my mouth there. Look look through the eyes of the Kundalini as much as you can. Now, I know. I know that there are certain judgments in society, certainly in the society of the United States, that that require you to to see an individual uh, within a level of, shall we say, survival-based judgmentalism, such as, uh, you know, a robber who may be approaching you or somebody who you wake up and find in your house or, you know, uh, maybe a, 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 a person who is, who is out to give you harm in some way or another. Uh, this is a different scenario. I'm not looking at that. I mean, sure, you can go into that with forgiveness, and because you have kundalini, their mind will probably be changed about how they want to interact with you, whether or not they know it. So uh, as much as you can, look at all people with a softer gaze and with a with a richer level of love that is reaching out to them. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Amelia, can you come over here, please? And I want you to, to kind of man the laptop here, if you would. You know how to work these? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, and hold still, because this couch yeah, creaks. Just second, my second. All right. Um, Look uh, at a person that, so for instance, you know, you take a suicidal person, you know, you with Kundalini, especially if it's Kundalini suicide, you need to look very carefully at that person and, and, and how they're asking for help or what they're saying in order to ha- ask for help and, and how uh, definitive their, their suicidal intentions are and, and things of this nature. And you don't go into judgment. You just go into healing. You go into healing with it. And if it's beyond your your experience or beyond what you're able to access at this point with your kundalini, you need to take it over to a professional. You know, don't be afraid to 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 uh, help the person make a call to, say, a suicide hotline or something of that level. But it, but also just with people that you meet on the street, as Amelia and, and I met this gentleman just crossing the street. Our judgments can, be, can come so hot and so heavy and so fast in such a, a, a small amount of time. It's, it's a good practice to begin with regards to your, your kundalini to begin to modify how you think about others how you think about their lifestyle, how you think about their looks, how you think about their gender, how you think about the way they dress, how you think about the way their hairstyle is or their makeup is or or their, you know, whether or not they're they're really strong or really weak, really fat, really thin. I mean, really begin to see uh through the eyes of Kundalini. Oh, it looks like our laptop just went down. Hang on a second. Uh, now, look, you're going to need to use this, okay? Stand by. You have to move this around, okay? okay. That keeps the light on. Okay. Look into these areas. Look into these areas and be very, very careful now because you have the Kundalini. As I mentioned before, it's a very, very strong expression and and whether you know it or not, you may be telepathically sending instructions to another person to feel bad about how they look or how they are or what they're doing or what they're not doing. Really begin to modify your your natural pro- proclivity within the Western society, certainly, uh, in, in how you commit to another person. Okay. 
Have a look at that in yourself. Self-correct when you find yourself falling into these levels of judgment. Self-correct so that you don't make the same mistakes over and over and over and over. It's it's not hard to do. Uh, you know, I I did this too. You know, person cuts you off in traffic or something like that. You immediately go into judgment. Oh, well, they're an idiot or they're an asshole or something like that. And I want you to just take a step back and go, maybe they're just in a hurry. Maybe there's an emergency, a family emergency. You know, there are other reasons why people are in a, you know, a major hurry on the freeway and they might be cutting you off and just let them go. Let them go ahead of you. It's probably not going to take too much time out of your schedule. Uh, Here's the guest call-in number if you'd like to call in, and and you may have a comment about this. The number is 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. And uh, and, uh, you have something to pass on to me? Yes, somebody somebody here on the chat room has made a comment and it's about suicide and addictions and saying that, you know, not at the moment, but yes, for much of my life I've wanted to commit suicide and have done many of the drugs and, you know, shut off that and, and many stupid things that should have ended my life. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah very important stuff and thank you for posting. So, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, not so much these days, but there was a time when you'd look at a person with a tattoo in the United States and go, oh, my God, you know, they must be, you know, a sailor. They must be, you know, someone who is really on the on the outskirts or the fringe of society. And not so now. I mean, everybody, you know, and their aunt seems to have a tattoo. So so look at this and look at how this fits in with your Kundalini. And this is the most important thing, because this is a conversation about your kundalini and and the amount of judgment that you insert into society vis-a-vis your kundalini. As I started to mention before, you may be telepathic without even knowing it. You may be a sender, not so much of a receiver at first. Sometimes you become a very loud sender and your reception capabilities may come later. And so this is something that I'd like you to consider because as the kundalini comes into your body and begins to circulate and and transform uh, your body into this power-packed, you know, star of, of, of kundalini grace, you need to begin to modulate your emotional body, your mental body, and most importantly, your ego body, which ties into all the bodies. The ego ties into all bodies of expression, not just those that are petty and and uh, competitive or things of that nature. You know, it, it has it has filaments that that go into the emotional body, so that you can feel good about yourself when you're doing a certain thing that you that that uh, society says is good, or that you feel is good, or that you want to do. And so, really begin to understand that that the the ego will, will infiltrate all aspects of your life. Even your spiritual body can be, you know, accessed by the uh, the human ego. You know, like, a, oh, my spiritual life is the only one that's true. You get a lot of uh, spiritual religious competition, uh, here, especially in the United States, because, you know, we, we, we're very tolerant of many, many different forms of religion, except those that aren't like ours. <laughs> You know, we have we have, you know, Christian based religions, Hindu based religions, Islamic religions and religions that are kind of uh, homegrown like uh, uh, Mormonism or, you know, some of the other religions that started there in the U.S. uh, a while ago. I believe Jehovah's Witnesses would be another one. So so even into your spiritual evolution, will your levels of judgment begin to orchestrate how you live and how you express towards other people who are not the same as you. And even just having the kundalini, oh, they're not awakened. Or, oh, they're way so awakened. Um, now, I have a little bit of a, of a, of a you know, 
issue with with uh, people who don't have kundalini giving advice to people that do have kundalini to me i see that more as a safety issue than anything else you know they can give a person you know such incredibly uh mistaken information that that person could do harm to themselves and so you know uh I see that, and I will move against that every single time. I will move uh, into helping the person clarify where they get uh, their information, what their sources of information are, and maybe maybe they want to uh, to receive Kundalini advice from those who actually have it. And this can come across uh, sounding like a judgment. And and I apologize if that is the case, but you know. The intention is not as a judgment. The intention is to help the person come through, come through and into the kundalini in such a way that it is a positive, beneficial manifestation of grace upon them. Uh, but this goes, you know, this goes on and on throughout our lives. Uh, you know, is, is he an A student? Is he an F student? Is she an A student? Is she an F student? Uh, girls can't drive at night. You know, and this is funny because... I've just been driven for the last two and a half hours at like it seems a hundred and eighty six thousand miles per hour by a woman driving on the other side of the road, shall we say. And I'm saying, <laughs> you know, half the time I'm reaching for the, 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 the suicide handle only because I'm not used to <laughs> you know, Amelia drives very, very, very well. You know, she's a Formula One race car driver here in Ireland and she she knows her stuff. She knows her stuff, and and so you know you don't you, you don't want to judge people, especially when that judgment is refuted right in your face. Okay, women can have kundalini, and women are great drivers, especially at night. Sometimes uh, we we raced here from from Dublin to Cork, which is about a two and a half hour drive, maybe almost three. Yeah, 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 and. Uh, she did great, even without cruise control, which it stuns me because, you know, I'm a cruise control kind of person. Anyway, uh, the, the guest call-in number is 347-934-0026. When you're in a big city like Dublin or even Cork, you come across all different kinds of, of people, They're people doing their, you know, just going through their life. We got there. Uh, we were wandering around Dublin uh, just to to see the place and you know I, I i had an opportunity to see many different people a lot of people coming home after five o'clock you know there's this big evacuation of the high-rise buildings at the five or five thirty everybody's heading towards the buses or the subway or i'm not sure they have a subway they have a they have a rail line that that's on top and and uh you know I met the nicest people, you know, when we ask them for directions. <laughs> because Amelia doesn't know Dublin that well either. She's a cork girl, you know, that's a very different city. Very, very nice people. And I just have to reiterate one thing that I've noticed in my travels around the world. There are a lot of sweet, sweet, nice people. And it doesn't matter where, how they're dressed or what ethnicity they are or what religion they are. People are just absolutely gorgeous beautiful helpful loving individuals and i want to i want you to know that those of you who may be afraid of traveling because you know you've heard this about that group of people or this about that and another country uh most of the people are nice people they are very very nice and i want you to understand that uh uh, I'm sure you do. I'm sure the, the, the Kundalini activated an awakening and those who are seeking an activation and awakening have that understanding. And, and as you get on, say, a, a network like, say, Facebook or Yahoo, uh, Facebook mostly because it has that interactive ability to, to give instantaneous communication or at least as close as you can get that while you're still tap, tap, tapping on a keyboard. Or, or on a on a virtual keyboard as you use on the on the iPad here, people are beautiful souls. And yes, you do have people that come out. They're cross. They're angry. They're disturbed. They're upset. You know, I've just been dealing with a person who who uh, doesn't like uh, the, the 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 quality of the information I give on the website, and he's holding my feet to the fire. And then there are people that 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 lie that that just fabricate things about me 
on the internet as well and and so I just want you to know that you know I'm also a a a uh, a participant in the in the judgmentalism that 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 occurs and yeah I think it's just a I, I see it as a really excellent opportunity for forgiveness uh, you you just need to forgive people not everybody's having a great day not everybody's having a good time in life like that gentleman that crossed the street in front of us you know he's having a hard life it's not an easy life for him but he still finds the time to smile to 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 people he doesn't even know as he crosses the street and i would i would like you to to and and, and as i will you know use him as a great example on what it is you want to do how it is you want to be think about it think about how you can change your life in a positive way that affects others in a positive way how you can step out of that expected uh, behavioral consequence of society that we call judgment now let's let's separate that also from the judgment of a court system or the judgment you know that is used in, a, in in the legal sense this is not about that this is not about that this is about what we do to each other on the most intimate and and inane ways throughout our day throughout our night throughout our scholastic experience and, and into our adulthood as we interact with other others in society Begin to see through the gaze of the divine. Begin, you know, sometimes I, I've used this as an example in my teachings is look at people as, as they're just children. For those of you who are parents, if maybe you have a six-year-old or a seven-year-old or, or you've had them in your life already. and Maybe they're grown adults now. But you remember the innocence and, and, the, and, and the, the, the beauty of that child. Today, I wanted to uh, take Amelia to an IMAX uh, movie theater. I, I found one in, uh, in Dublin. And uh, as we're getting ready to go up the escalators, about 100, maybe 150, uh, seven and eight-year-olds were, were in a group with, with their attendant adult guides. You know, they had gone to see some movie, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the IMAX theater. And uh, you see them and you watch them and you just see their purity and their innocence. And you can also see uh, some of the uh, society already beginning to, to rub off on them as far as judgments and whatnot. But by and large, they were very, very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful young, young people. And I just would encourage you to see that old guy asking for money on the street or that person sleeping in a corner of a building in the rain, uh, see them as that beautiful five or six year old child that they once were. However, it ended up for them being in that position that they're in right now. That child is still there. That expressive, beautiful child is still there. And, and this is, is how I will suggest you begin to see them. See them through the soft gaze of divine love. Don't, don't, you know, I should say, try not to make the judgment that, that because of whatever choices they've made in life that, is, that has brought them to the point where they're sleeping in the rain in the, in the recess of a building, that they've failed in any way. It could just be a karmic thing that they need to go through, and this will end for them in a week or two, or a year, or five years. Remember, I was homeless for 12 with the Kundalini. Okay, I was the person that you would be see you'd seen sleeping in the bushes. I must say though, I did do my best to stay out of sight. <laughs> in the United States, uh, they, they can be a little difficult on the homeless people. You know, and they'll they'll want to arrest you or process you or you know do all kinds of things with you. And and so look at it, look at it this way. And as for those of you that are actually in the grace of the Kundalini right now. Don't look at people that are having a challenging time as dangerous to you. Uh, you don't have to be afraid of these people. Don't look at the elderly as something that, ooh, 
oh, my God, I don't want to look like that. Look at all those wrinkles. Don't go there. This is, this is exactly what we're talking about in this conversation. I want you to go and give that elderly person a big hug. They're your grandparents in an expanded format. They are you and you are them, and they deserve that hug, that smile, that open door, that open hand. And I mean that open hand in friendship. <laughs> Go visit them at the convalescent hospital. I have another, I have another student that, that I asked you to I, – I forget how it came about. I think I just said, okay, I want you to visit. I want you to start visiting people in convalescent homes. And she did. And she has three solid friends, beautiful, beautiful people that she learns a lot from. Let me tell you, the elderly in our society have a lot to teach. But because we make an, a, an inaccurate judgment about their mental stability or their, or their, their, you know, whether or not they have Alzheimer's or dementia or whatever it is, we make a judgment that keeps us from partaking of the wisdom they had to give us. And I want, I want you Kundalini people to understand that there is wisdom at your fingertips in a convalescent hospital. Wisdom at your fingertips in a convalescent hospital. Wisdom at your fingertips in a VA hospital. As you know, our last show was, uh, was at Jake and Eleanor's house and and uh and jake is a is a ex-vietnam veteran hello jake hello eleonora and jake volunteers his time to go in and help those soldiers coming back from extreme traumatic events having your legs blown off or a some sort of a limb blown off or having ptsd for years and years and years you see i mean the there are so many ways that that we foist our judgments upon others uh, without the necessity for doing so. It's not a survival scenario. It's a judgment, a judgmental scenario. And with the Kundalini, as I mentioned before, you may be a very powerful sender, and I want you to realize that even a look can transmit your thoughts. Not just to one person, but to a broad band based of people in a, in a single environment. So really, really, really begin to reevaluate your thoughts and why you're thinking certain thoughts in certain ways. Kundalini is the most powerful energy a human body can hold while it still is a human physical body. Realize that with that power, that great, amazing power comes a great and amazing level of responsibility. And part, part of that responsibility is changing how you think about those within your social environment. Changing how you respond to those thoughts about those in your social environment. Really, really dig deep. Really, really begin to understand the ramification of your thoughts and your actions that are that are backed up by a divine force how that affects people how that makes them feel it's called compassion my friends the blitz is coming again and I have to be careful that I don't say too many right things Every every time the the Kundalini will give me bliss when it when I'm saying things like this and so I just if you if you start hearing a heavy breathing <laughs> on the radio show it's not it, it's just me having a blissful experience and and, uh, and oh what I love for you to experience this bliss this joy it's like a it's like a bolt of sunshine that just barrels down upon the top of your head and it just explodes within your heart. And you cannot help but to heave and sigh and sob sometimes with bliss. And I would like you to do that as you manifest a new way of communicating with society, communicating with your family, your friends, but more importantly, with absolute strangers. Okay. Now, I have to tell you that uh, the battery just clicked off. 
on the laptop, and so we can't see the uh, the chat group, you beautiful people in the chat group. So uh, it, this is <laughs> this is just a technological thing that we're dealing with. But this iPad has plenty of juice left, and and uh, we'll be able to continue this conversation. I would love for you to feel this bliss and to feel the communication between you and your kundalini about how your interactions with society are. And I'm going to I'm going to give this this iPad to Amelia so that she can kind of begin to to give you her take on this. You have to remember that that I've known Amelia since 2009. Uh but her act, her activation and her her awakening into extreme levels of kundalini have taken place I think within mostly in the last two and a half years. And uh and so you don't get to hear this from from a kundalini active woman too often, and I know that half of you out there are, are women, k active women, people who are searching and actively going into the awakening response. Uh, um, Kali Ku, you're a new person who is who is into this. Julie, of course, we know about you and your and your your excellent awakening process and 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 Eileen and Rosemary and all the people who all the women the sacred feminine those who have the sacred feminine body you know I want you to get it from a from a sacred feminine bodied viewpoint as well and so here we go here's Amelia Thanks Kristen um for me, everything that Chrism has said, you know, all the examples that he has given, especially that one yesterday with the gentleman, that, um, that for me, um, I suppose, brought into a moment of time um, and a, a perfect example of how not to be judgmental. And what I have found um, with the Kundalini since it began, you know, since it awakened and since I began to surrender to its agenda for me, is that moments like that expand when we open ourselves to them, when we open ourselves to the Kundalini and to hearing the words of a teacher such as, as Chrism is giving to us now, what he is saying. Um, there is such an amazing opportunity for love and for um, giving into the population and into everybody that we meet this um, non-judgmental and loving um, radiance and service and, and, and all of that. And something that occurred to me as well, Chrism, as you were speaking, is, um, you know, the judgment of ourselves something and um, sometimes we can be very judgmental of ourselves um, and that's something as well that I have come to um, bring a change to you know maybe you'd say something about that and another thing would be something that I have learned as well through the grace and blessings of Kundalini is it's very important that you know we can actually accentuate judgment of people through passing on rumors to gossip. We have to be very, very, um, I suppose, aware of how we judge others in what we perceive to not have a responsibility, that we don't have a responsibility for. And I've discovered that for myself. If I do that, I am also passing judgment. I might be, you know, passing on a story that somebody else told me, but I'm making that judgment mine when I pass it to somebody else. I own it. I own the karma. And um, that's something that I have stopped doing. Well, have have greatly become aware of. And, and, and that's something that I think is very, very important. And it's something in my life that... Um, Again, it's a little bit like that gentleman. It was a split moment, a, just a moment where he passed us and I was offered that option. It's the exact same thing when somebody tells us a story, when somebody gives us a rumor, you know, the way we judge what we're listening and we take it on board and we don't even give it a second thought or question. You know, we just jump straight into judgment and that is wrong. So, yeah, so that's, that's sort of what's coming to me there, Chris, and, and maybe about the self-judgment. Yeah. Now, the self-judgment, if it's within a kundalini context, and if it's in a self-correction of the ego context, I'm fine with that. 
I'm fine with that. Yeah. But if it's a self-judgment that is nailing you to the cross for, you know, for being raised a certain way, for having a certain color of skin, for for being a certain gender or a certain sexual orientation or, you know, having a certain, you know, character trait that uh that society feels is, is 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 less attractive than others then no 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 don't go into that against yourself that's 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 you attacking your divine body and i want you to really uh look at that and i'm very grateful for for amelia to bring that up because you know in this society, we're shown a certain body styles. Let's just say, let's just use the physical body. You know, if, you, if you're overweight or if you're if you're underweight, and if you know the many places you are between. And I've been guilty of it myself of you know making jokes about fat people, skinny people. I was raised in in an environment where racism was accept was accepted, uh, judgmentalism about body types or mental status was accepted. I mean, every, every, every hurtful thing in the book almost seemed to be an acceptable uh, matter of, of uh, expression in my early life and, and even up through my 20s. Um, these days, you know, if, if like if I have a student that's overweight and I know that weight is beginning to demolish their body, well, yeah, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say, you know, back off of whatever it is you're doing, eating, or if you're not exercising enough, or if you're in some sort of a, a, a masochistic cycle, back off of that. Don't, don't kill yourself in a way that, or damage yourself in, in a way that is that is you know that that you're doing you know back it up let's let's change the scenario up here i won't let it rest but i won't necessarily throw it throw it against you any any more like i used to when i was you know in my younger days um I, yeah go ahead. Well, i was going to say things like you know i'm not worthy i don't deserve this and um, you know that kind of judgment on, on myself. Well, well, you. In in some ways, uh, you know, this this inner dialogue, this self talk, this negative self talk is can be very hurtful and very programming. It programs how you are, programs how you how you begin to express yourself towards other people, and and so if you're if you're self condemnative towards you then it becomes very easy to be condemnative of other people as well. And so really, really, the, the, the cleanup starts at home. The cleanup starts behind your heart, behind your eyes. So if you can clean up your own negative uh, inner dialogue, then you can also begin to clean up your, your, the, the, the dialogue that you have with other people. Okay. Um, and it's a very important thing that, that Amelia brings up because – most of us uh, will have times of negative inner dialogue, or what I what I what I would call self hurtful inner dialogue, and unless you're making observations that are geared towards self corrective measures, uh, then it, you're just hurting yourself. You're just you're stabbing yourself with a fork, and I want you to to you know reconsider that activity. Seriously reconsider the activity. Once again, the Kundalini is a very, very amplified force of, of grace within you. And as you self-condemn, well, the Kundalini may make that really, really strong. And therefore, as you, as you, as you self-condemn and you initiate condemnative practices on other people, well, once again, that's very, very, very strong. This, yeah. And I'm not saying it's any better if you're not awakened, but I can only speak really to awakened or those who are searching for the awakening. The noble qualities must be expressed. And compassion for yourself and compassion to other people are part of those noble qualities. And they're also part of divine truth. Are, are part 
of the nobility, the, the noble suite of, of qualities that the Kundalini will insist, will insist that you participate with. The, the thing is, is, you know, these noble qualities are amplified as well. And so as you engage in them, as you engage in, in a positive inner dialogue towards yourself, about how you are and what you are and who you are and where you've been and what you're doing. As you engage in a positive those qualities become amplified. And, and as you begin to engage others in, in an exterior dialogue, well, those dialogues begin to take on a, 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 uh, a strain of truth, of divine truth. And it's this truth that begins to to uplift the people you're talking with instead of you know dragging them down. Um, think about this. Think about this and how you can change that inner dialogue to express a positive force upon yourself and and from that self that that positive self identification to a positive uh, identification of other people and their selves and how they feel as they walk through life doing whatever it is they're doing. Judge not lest ye be judged is a very, very powerful reminder of, of what our responsibilities are in life. Certainly with the Kundalini. Absolutely with the Kundalini. And you know how I feel about absolutism. <laughs> With the Kundalini, it is very, very important that you begin to redirect the nature of your thinking, redirect the understanding of how far and how how strong your your thoughts are reaching other people. I've told you that you know a a, a fully awakened human being has a, a magnetic radiance that is over about a mile in diameter. Think about that. Think about that and think about where you are in your awakening or activation process and the, the people that you're affecting without even knowing it. The radiance, you know, the, if you're living in an apartment and you say you don't know your neighbors, well, your radiance goes right into their living room, right into their bedroom, right into their bathroom, right into their refrigerator and the food that they're eating. One of the one of the interesting things about having Kundalini in this timeline in this in this uh, Western uh, uh, de- developmental uh, uh, society, you know, technological society, is is having Kundalini here now with all of these gadgets and and, and all of this interaction and communication with people all over the world via the internet and via books and TV and movies and radio and music. It's very interesting to have the Kundalini these days because in the past, a Kundalini person would have been sequestered in a, in a monastery or sequestered in a temple or sequestered in the jungle, uh, in, in, uh, even in, in just like a, a hundred and 50 years ago, people would have been thrown into a, a psych ward snake pit where they would have lived out the rest of their life in, in sheer terror and trauma and horror. Uh, but these days, these days, we have the opportunity to really begin to change this world. As we change ourselves, we can, change, we can accept ourselves as Kundalini awakened people. We can accept ourselves as kundalini activated people. We can accept ourselves of those who are searching for and yearning for and practice, practicing towards these, these truths, these noble qualities. And by going for them and expressing them, we are changing this world, changing this paradigm. It's a, it's a, it's a very special time to be alive and to be kundalini activated and awakened or searching for those qualities. It's a very, very special time to have this. Appreciate it. Know it. Realize it. Even to this day, there are people in some parts of the world where when they want to seek kundalini, well, they'll go to the old ways and they'll, they'll make sure their family's taken care of, but they leave that family and they go live in the forest 
or they go live in the desert and they begin to wander you know through those ecosystems in order to find the, the, the Shakti Kundalini well this no more do you have to do that certainly not in, in the western uh, tradition you know the western tradition does not support that you know partly because you know the western tradition is eating up all the forests and the jungles and the ecosystems <laughs> and we can also begin to change that as well as we go out and we extend our noble qualities to our fellow mortals the the animals the insects the fish the, the flowers, the plants, the trees, the air, the water, the oceans. As we begin to to manifest these noble qualities into the many, many different classifications of life upon this upon this planet, those that we haven't even discovered yet, we are divine points of radiance. And in that radiance we can begin to join with each other as we have with these seminars and as we do in this broadcast and as we do on the on the, on the different networks that, that I mentioned at the, at the start of the program. We can begin to change this world and in, increase the divine level of expression, increase the levels of love, increase the levels of, of appreciation and for diversity and, and viva la différence and, and all of these qualities that that make this such an interesting place to be alive and and such an interesting place to have the kundalini in. Think about these things. And if you want to make a comment or have a question, call this number, 347-934-0026. This is a live broadcast all over the world as Her Holiness of Amelia Centara indicated on her Facebook page. Seriously, we are all over the world right now. I'm coming to you from from apartment of of of, uh, of, of Amelia's daughter Vani in the, in the city of Cork in the county of Cork in the eastern part of Ireland. Am I right? Eastern <laughs> part. Is that right? From south. 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 <laughs> Forgive me. South. An old Viking city, from what I hear. You know, uh, and and here you are. Uh, Rosemary is listening in Minnesota. Eileen is listening in in uh, in uh, Florida. Julie is listening in in one of the Carolinas, I believe it's South Carolina. And you all are listening wherever you are in this world. Begin to change your levels of judgmentalism towards yourself and others, towards the animals and the plants and the environment towards others on a different spiritual path than you are. Begin to release any level of discomfort you may have because somebody's different than you. Begin to embrace the diversity and differences in in the natures and and the and, and the expressions of development towards divine qualities that that other people have in this world. Be open to changing your inner dialogue towards yourself and as you do that towards other people. Think about this. Feel it. Feel it in my words. Listen to the Kundalini in my voice and begin to understand the Kundalini in your voice. Ah, looks like we might have a call. All right, since I don't have a screener, here we go. Right off the bat. Hello, caller. How oh, are you? Couldn't be better. Oh, Jake. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Miss you guys. Hello to Amelia's big family there. And love you. And uh, thanks for everything. <laughs> Jake, Jake. Jake, it's so good to hear your voice. How's your blood sugar? <laughs> oh, great, great. Couldn't be better. Oh, good to hear you guys. I won't say much because you're saying at all what I need to hear. Oh. And uh, thanks so much for everything. We'll see you guys soon, you know. I hope so. I hope to see my, you soon. 
It's funny, you know, because I was going to come. My exes, which are my relatives, all just came from Denmark. So there was probably a reason I'm here, you know, whatever. But uh, really good talk. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I won't judge anyone from now on, well, not I, even Eleonora. I tell you, Eleonora, hello, Eleonora, and, and thank you both for listening. Jake, I really just want to say again uh, my my appreciation for the work that you do with the veterans. Uh, oh, seriously. thank you. My appreciation yeah. for all that you give us in the spiritual and the K community. And Eleanor is right here. I, I, I just want to just, yeah, please continue to do that, my friend, and take out those artificial sugars, would you please? Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's me. And I love you and I miss you all. Emilia, love you, baby. Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish we were here. I remember I was already uh, ready to go, but then, you know, Jake changed his decision. <laughs> well, we miss you too, Eleonora, and we will see you and Jake again soon. I know we will. And thank you for your hospitality. And, you know, it was wonderful being with you for the seminar and for those days afterwards. Blessings and love to the two of you. I want to I wanna oh. go visit I want to go visit the pine the piney barrens or whatever you guys call that in New Jersey. So I'm going to have to I'm going to take you to where a, a guy saved like a whole hotel by carrying them out during a fire. I think I told you that story. Yeah. And I have a, a, another uh, I'll, I'll take a, a, a copy of the field and stream from a century ago of another guy from there. I'll let you guys go. I love your work, and thanks for all you do, too. And I'm just listening. I'll shut up for once. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Jake. Bye, Jake. Bye, Bye Eleanor. Bye, Love you guys. Love to the family. I hear them all around you. Bye. Shall, shall, I, just you, shall I just put you on hold, then, to listen? Or are you listening on the computer? Says, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go, folks. That's Jake and Eleonora. And, and they really do. They, they walk this talk in, in a very real way. I mean, really reaching out. Eleonora is reaching out to the people in, in Kiev. And by the way, just so you know, it's, it's not pronounced Kiev. It's pronounced Kiev. And, and this was given us directly from a resident of Kiev, Eleonora, Jake's wife. And so she's reaching out to the people in the, in Ukraine and and helping that you know that somewhat difficult situation right now and and so blessings to you Jake blessings to you Eleonora and thank you so much for calling in and giving your grace into this program thank you very very much and so there you have it I mean really uh, I've never been to New Jersey before and and, and uh, what a beautiful, gorgeous place that it is. It is. I mean, it's not just what you kind of see on the TV. Not that I have TV, but I've, I've kind of, you know, I kind of drop into to some of the society entertainments every now and again, and and uh, I think they call it Jersey Shore or something like some sort of a reality-based program. And it's not that way at all. It's it's actually quite a very, very beautiful place with forests and. And if you're a, an, an American citizen, uh, you know you're, you're, you're looking at a lot of the history, historical areas that we were taught in U.S. history in school. It's very, kind of very cool. Uh, Amelia and I uh, walked on a bridge in the middle of a snowstorm, going over the bridge that the river that Washington, General Washington, during the Revolution back in 1776, they were crossing in all those, all those times and. Uh, yeah, yeah, a very, very wonderful, splendid visit that we had with Jake and Eleonora. And a, and a time to really, really reflect on how our judgment reaches into those who are struggling, like the veterans. You know, uh, you know regardless of how you feel about, a, a, you know, the, the U.S. Uh, uh, presence in, in various parts of the world, regardless of how you feel about that, these are human beings that are come, coming back in, in very, very difficult circumstances. And this is where our compassion needs to be given, as Jake is doing, and as Eleonora does with those in, the, in, in Ukraine. And so, yeah, yeah, 
begin to look at where your thoughts go, how your thoughts go. Uh, doesn't mean you can't be amused, but maybe not always amused at the expense of a person. You know, someone different than you. Someone, you know, you, you got the, 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 oh, let me go through them. Geez, the spick jokes, the wop jokes, the, the patty jokes, the, uh, liney jokes, the, the gringo jokes, the Yankee jokes. The, I mean, it just goes on and on. Um, now, personally, I don't mind, uh, you know, hearing that type of thing because for me, it's just a, for me, it's just a level of, of amusement that somebody is reaching for, and, and and I can buy into that because my self conversation doesn't get upset over that because it, you know I just I can see the intent is just to be humorous and just to be amusing and not to be hurtful, but not everybody sees it that way, and and so you really need to to feel the group that you're with or the group that you're around, and and like. Uh, and Jake is a very, very amusing fellow. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and Eleonora is amusing in her stoicism around his amusement. <laughs> almost like, almost like she's heard every joke he's ever told. <laughs> but he's he's a very amusing fellow, and and that that amusement is is also a level of joy. And that joy is given to other people, and it allows them to just relax and laugh a little bit, or in Jake's case, a lot. Uh, he he's he, he's an amazing man, and and uh, I would encourage all of you who belong to the to the Yahoo group networks, the Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Yahoo groups. Jake is on that group, and Eleanor is on that group, and 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 join the group. Say hello to him and share some amusement. Share some good stories of life with him and Eleanor, and they will with you as well. And this underscores how how international we are. You know, we have people from Ukraine, people from New Jersey, people from California, people from Australia, people from India, people from Africa, people from Europe, people from France, people from from Asia, all all within the Kundalini context all within the kundalini family of of the inner divine expressing through the human body. Think about that. Think about how we encircle this globe with our energy, with our thoughts, with our divinity. Seriously, folks, think about this. And think about how you can just reach out with kundalini and, and touch a star. And if you can reach out and touch a star, well, you can reach out and touch another Kundalini star in a body on this planet right now. Join any of those groups, and you can do that. By listening to Amelia, to Eileen, to Rosemary, to, to Jake and Eleonora, to myself. You see, Kundalini isn't bound by the, the restrictions of time. As you in the archives know, this energy can reach out to you in the real time that you're hearing this and listening to this and interacting with this, this, this conversation that we're having right now or any of the other past conversations. And you can begin to actively participate in that divine encircling of this globe of this beautiful sphere of kundalini evolution on this world. Consider this, know this, and enjoy it. Laugh out loud. Roll on the floor laughing as they say R-O-F, or, well, I, I won't say everything that they say. That. But, but really, bring some joy into your life through laughter, through amusement but not at somebody else's expense unless it's a you know it, it it's not you know hurting another person i i you know it's 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 a very fine thing here i'm talking about um i can sit here and joke with amelia about almost anything i can sit there and joke with jake about everything because he jokes about everything and everyone uh but you just you just have to see the love 
encounter the love, the love of the Kundalini within you. And remember, we're very, very different from previous civilizations where Kundalini people were sequestered away, called witches, hung or, or drowned or burned at the stake, uh, thrown into a, a psych ward, or uh, whether it's a present-day psych ward or, or a, a, a past, past-time psych ward. We're very different now. We can have this, and we can have this in public. And yet, and yet, just because we can have it in public doesn't mean that we don't have great responsibility with how we're having this in public. One of the reasons why Kundalini people are sequestered away is because of their effect on the populations. And in this conversation, I would like to suggest that our effect upon the populations be positive, and love-based, joy-based, inclusive, inclusivity needs to be a, a, a catchphrase within this context. Not racist, not uh, gender biased, or, or you know any of the biases that we have in our society. And, and as Jake is able to do, you can joke about your ex-wife or your ex-husband. <laughs> As long as it's non-hurtful and non-judgmental, and Jake is very non-judgmental in his in his amusement, uh, and yet it comes out so pure and so nice and so so freely from him. He's like a spigot of amusement, and this is very helpful for people who are in extreme depressive states, as are some of the VAs. And, uh, patients, and as are some of the patients, uh, you know, in a psych ward having kundalini trauma at this very moment, as are some of the elderly people who are trapped in a in a in a convalescent hospital waiting to die without any communication from their family or friends. Make it a point. I, I will I will challenge you. Do what I do. Do what what my other student does. And go out and visit people in a convalescent home. Do it more than once. Volunteer at that homeless shelter. Volunteer just to 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 bring somebody their groceries if they're not able to do it themselves. Reach out into this society with your kundalini, and your kundalini will reach into your process with huge levels of bliss, huge levels of joy and love, and further evolution within the kundalini path. I want to leave you with those words. And I and, and even, yes, it's a, it's a little bit shorter of a time, but we're in somebody's home right now. You know, and, and whether or not they're listening, they're trying to sleep. They got to go to work tomorrow. So I, I want to leave you with this. And I, I want to, to just offer this bliss and this grace and these noble understandings with regards to your kundalini awakening experience. And I'm going to hand it over to Amelia so she can also say goodbye to you in her own way. That was wonderful. I'm sitting here next to Chris and listening to his words. And as often happens to me when I'm, um, when I'm at home in the, um, in my kitchen in Kerry and Chris asks me a question and he goes, are you there? <laughs> I feel a little bit like that now because I become very absorbed with what he's saying and my, you know, it connects so much with my Kundalini um, and it is the correct thing to do and it's it's what I want to do and do more and so thank you, Chrism, for everything that you've spoken about from your Kundalini to us here. Um, oh, wonderful. So goodbye everybody and see you again next week. Yes, everyone. Goodbye. And, and thank you for listening live around the world. And thank you for listening in the future for those who visit the archives. And uh, we'll see you next week.